Good, mo good morning. Good evening. <laughs> Welcome to the Committee of the Whole. I'm glad you're here again this evening. I commend you for turning out in this weather. Although we have nothing to complain about, we are in Wisconsin. So thank you for being here. Alderman Gruff, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. D. Berg? Here. E. Berg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Gruff is here. Kittleson? Here. Manny? Excused. Meyer? Here. Montemarro? Here. Radke? Excused. I'm sorry, he's ill. Yes. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Susha? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderwiley? Here. 14 present. Quorum is present. We will proceed. Thank you, Alderman Groff. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of our last meeting held August 22, 2005. Do we have a second? We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of our last meeting. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of approval signify by saying aye. 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 Disapproval? Nay. Thank you. Agenda number four, possible action on site selection if information from Vandervaart has been received. We do have some information that we received from the Vandervaart company. I think you've all seen it on your desk. And Susan Hart will explain what information she has gathered. She will explain that information that you received. Susan? Have it turned on, yes. Hi. <laughs> Basically, um, I contacted the contacts that um, Vandervaart at our meeting on August 30th had indicated had expressed some interest in purchasing parcels or pieces of the land, and you have my notes on your desk. Now, two of the folks I was not able to reach, uh, they did not return phone calls. Um, but this is a busy time of year. I don't know if people are gone or on vacation. But you can tell that basically there is one possibility, and that's at the very top, quashes. They need to um, expand. Oh, thank you, Marge. They need to expand their business. Um, they said that they're getting so much uh, requests for extra rental equipment that they can't house it all. So they um, have not discussed a price, though, with Vandervaart, because Vandervaart had indicated they did not want to parcel out the, the land. But they were the most interested. Um, Joseph Schmidt & Sons is not interested. Uh, Tom Schaefer is a developer out of um, Milwaukee, still waiting on a return phone call. Progressive Beginnings, waiting on a return phone call. Northland Plastics, they are not interested in the price that was quoted by Vandervaart, but they would be interested in the price if it wasn't an, at the industrial park price of 22000 an acre. Automation Products, um, both Mary Rager and I have tried to reach them, and I don't even know if there's still an open business. The phone just rings and rings and rings. No answering machine, no pickup at all. Uh, Concord Development indicated that they had just briefly talked in passing about the um, idea of perhaps a residential area in that um, in the Vandervaart site. Uh, Great Lakes Training and Development is not interested. At one point, they had talked about building some low-income housing at that spot, but decided not to do that. And then Quash's Construction, um, they were at one point interested, but um, the gentleman I talked with, uh, Mr. Rayhane, indicated that they were initially quoted 60,000 an acre, but over the weekend it went up to 100,000 an acre, which you know, took away their interest real fast. And then Koenig Construction. Uh, he mentioned they had three clients. Two were RCS that I'd already explained up in Quashus Construction and the other um, Northland Plastics that expressed they are no longer interested. The third client, they want to remain anonymous, but indicated that they would be uh, interested perhaps in four acres on the south side for a retail type of application. But nothing more had been talked about or discussed. So what qu types of questions can I answer for you? 
Susan, did it, when you were speaking with any of these um, mm -hmm. prospective buyers, did they say, please call me back, let me know what's going on? The closest I got to that was cautious equipment rental. Number one, and they... Number one, when he said, you know, yeah, we, we really might be interested. And he was real specific about what they wanted, the corner of Broadway and Business 42, uh, talked about what they would use it for. So um, I think that they were the really the only interested party. Okay, thank you very much. Alderman Dan Berg. How, ma how many acres uh, did Northland Plastics say they were interested in at the 22,000? What they had indicated is that um, they would, I'm sorry, I'm confusing them with someone else. They did not indicate how many acres. They just said that before they'd even consider it, it would have to be at the 22,000 an acre, the industrial site price. Alderman Danberg, does that answer? For what now. You were, what you were trying Fine. to find out? Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Madam Chair. I understand that this is the first phase of collecting the information for the Vandervaard um, site. Um, but in addition to our meeting that we had, mm -hmm. um, there was two properties that they were inquiring the highway off of Highway 42 and then out in the industrial park mm -hmm. further south, the garden right. property. And people have been calling me at home asking when those numbers will be translated and given to the elder persons. Um, I'm going to have to defer to Mr. Holton. Do you remember from that meeting that we were at, you were waiting for the end of the month to find out before you could translate some numbers for what the garden property would run? The Heisen property? No, not the Heisen, the garden property. You were well, they're looking for summer. both. I mean, just in terms of collecting that information. They think I was going to be presenting that. And but from the meeting, what I understood is the Heisen property. Um, I remember Mr. Holton saying that perhaps the city would not want to parcel that out because it would diminish the land value. Um, it was in your notes from the <coughs> meeting that we had. But the garden property, as I recall, because I did those minutes, uh, you were waiting for some information on the Romer property before you could. So do you have that yet? So, um, Mr. Mayor, I think you have some information for us. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. When we met, I believe Alderman uh, sort of remembers that they were also going to check uh, with the town of Wilson and the town of Cheboygan mm -hmm. to see if there were some, some restrictions with, with respect to heavy trucks on, on certain sections that, that didn't belong to the city. We haven't heard from them either. Uh, with respect to numbers, I think that what we need to do first is to get an appraisal of the Vandervoort site to see what it's actually worth so we can go back and translate the numbers from our end, uh, our, our acreage is selling for 22000 an acre. If they were to, to agree to a land swap, it would be our 22000 versus their 100000 per acre. Uh, to me, it's a little outrageous. We, it may be that this, if the council is, is interested in the Vandervoort, that the council consider instead of swap to do an outright purchase. Uh, I believe we'd come out ahead in, in that respect. But we can't get to that point until we know what the land's worth so that we can start comparing uh, both sites and, and, and so forth. What I did today also is I requested from engineering office a, an aerial map that gives me a much, much better picture and I did do a, a tour with uh, Chief Kirk and Deputy Chief Weiss today. We toured the property and got, to, got a better look at, at the, exactly what people have been talking about. What we haven't quite pinned down is what is that piece of land that Vanderward actually wants to keep and it would be my next step to, to pursue that if, uh, if, if we keep moving in that direction. There's still some, some questions that need to be, to be, uh, to be uh, answered, and I hope to make that contact soon. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, if, it seems to me that Mr. Titic, when he was spoke with us, wants to sell us 14 acres at $100,000 an acre. He wants to purchase 14 acres for $22,000 from us. I mean, we can call it swap, but we're going to pay him 100000 He's going to pay us 22000 for the over. land. And the land out at Heisen, I would imagine, would be definitely not $100,000 by any means that he would pay for that. And if, if we were to sell him the land at Heisen, it seems to me he would, it would work well for him. But of course, being in the town, 
all the property taxes go to the town, not us. We would simply get the 10,000, 22,000, however much we charge him for however many acres he wants. I think I'm right in all of these numbers. Alderman Serda, did you want to ask another question? Yes, please. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I contacted Vandervart today, and um, forgive us, because they were left with the impression that, again, the ball was in our court, but um, because they were going to be doing their own research on the roads and such. But, um, and I would, I, all I'm asking is that you present this information to the elder persons. Um, I was unaware, and I thought I communicated myself um, thoroughly in the meeting that I understand, for instance, Mr. Holton is giving his recommendation, but I, I, I guess I didn't want him to stop there and decipher and make that, that his own discretion there. I think that's for us elder persons. And all I was asking is to get the numbers, the reflection, for us to make that decision. Um, and as far as the 22,000, and maybe Paulette can answer this question, um, I was under the assumption, and Vandervart is fully understanding that it wasn't going to be a fair swap. They, they never gave that impression, and they realized right. that there would be some out-of-pocket expenses for the city. But if Paulette could answer, or Tom, the question of why we would maybe sell the acreage more out on Highway 42 versus our industrial park area. Well, that's going to come back up a little bit. Vandervart. I suggest them to check with the towns about what's, what use they could have with their zoning if it would fit their zoning. So they were doing that also. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't recommend not splitting up the, the parcel on Heist. I just said that the value of that property could be diminished if you split it up. Okay. So. Uh, Tom Holton, do we as a city have a price per acre for that Heisen property? No. It won't be $100,000 an acre no. that we can sell it to them? No. More like 22,000 or less? I would guess it'd be in the 20s, it'd be, a, it'd be a guess. You'd have to have it appraised, but I'd guess it'd be in okay. the probably low 20s, I would guess. So no matter what swap or sell that we do, we will be paying them a million three, a million four, a million one, a million something. Po possibly, yeah. It depends on what appraisal would come in at on their property too down here. Yeah. And if they don't hold to what they said, because he did repeatedly say, it's a firm 100,000. It's a firm 100,000. I heard those words repeatedly from the podium right where you are. Thank you. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Madam Chair. I thought that Mr. T. Tech said that they could negotiate the price at the end of his, of his talk. He was saying, well, you know, somewhere if we're going to be interested, uh, something with the monies could be discussed. So there wasn't a firm $100,000 there anymore. But I think That's he wants some type of a commitment also, you know, from the city. I mean, let's really sit down and let's talk about this. I mean, if, if we want something different other than the 100000 we have to sit down and talk. And I think they were willing to do that. Thank you, Alderman Sagali. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Madam Chair. In the meeting with... Uh, your Honor and Alderman Serta, were they still firm on the 100000 Did you get that impression per acre? Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't recall talking about that as far as, as the price again. Um, the one thing they were firm on was that if there was any contamination, if any was found at any point in time, they would not cover any of the costs. I don't recall. Do you recall them? Okay. Okay. Alderman Serta. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it, and I think it was referred into the document that the mayor had submitted to us concerning the conversations we had with Vandervart. The issue of as to why they had arrived at that price, and Vandervart had just said that was the appraisal that they had recently um, had, and it had came in at a hundred thousand per acre, so they had gave the explanation as to why they had arrived at that number. But um, if we do come back and if we do seek this appraisal ourselves and we come up with a different number, um, I think they would be willing to look at it at least. Do you think they'd be willing to look at 22,000 an acre? That'd be great. And I think it was pointed out, Madam Chair, that that wasn't unreasonable. That was the going price, so in all fairness to them. Yes. Anything further about the Vandervart information? Alderman Steffen. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I guess just a question uh, for the mayor. He mentioned that we would, at least his concept was moving forward, was um, working on appraisal. Is that something that we would do in-house, or would we have to have someone else do it? 
Your Honor. Here we go. Thank you. We'd have to contract it out. We'd have to get somebody to do a, a, a realtor to do an appraisal commercial. Alderman Stephan, did you want to add? I uh, No, I guess at this time I'd make a motion that we, I know I had my house appraised. It was a few hundred dollars, so it's not going to break us or anything to get an appraisal done at the end of our property. Second. We have a motion and a second to seek out an appraisal. Do we have any further discussion? That has to be recommended to council. Council has to approve that. Yes, that recommendation has to go to council. We can. I understand. Correct. Right. Any further discussion about recommending that to council? We'll take a vote. All those in favor of recommending, asking for an appraisal to council, signifying by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. And that was all the persons, Meyer and Susha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alderman Davis. Uh, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, what I'm about to do here might come around and bite us in the backside here for supporters of the City Hall site. But I'd like to make, make a motion at this time that the City Hall site be uh, the preferred site to build a police station. It's the most citizen friendly, most economical, and it's got the most cooperative existing owner right now. So I'd like to make that motion, Madam Chair. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to recommend City Hall as the site in which to build the police station. Any discussion? Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, a, a question on that motion, was that to only concentrate on City Hall and all the sites? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm in favor of the City Hall site because of the new information I've gotten, changed my mind, and recently, a few months ago I said that it was the wrong site, but now I think it will work. But I would vote against that motion because I feel at the Vandervar site, there's too, still too many questions. So if, if that motion would include the Vandervar site until some of the uh, answers are, some of the questions are answered, then I would vote for it. I can make that, I can amend that to include the Vandervar site. You'll add that. Would you second that? No. I'd second that. Then how do we withdraw the original <laughs> or change the... The second has to withdraw, otherwise we have to vote on that original motion. I will withdraw my second. Thank you, Alderman. We have a motion and a second to recommend City Hall and Vandervaart as possible sites on which to build the police station. Any further discussion on that motion? Alderman Susha. I would like to make another motion, so I'll hold it until the proper time. Right. Any further discussion on the motion to recommend City Hall and Vandervaart as two possible sites on which to build a police station? Seeing no further discussion, let's vote. Let's do a roll call. Sure. We'll all be held very responsible for what we're doing. And uh, City Hall. Okay, and I vote would be to two sites. Those two sites: Bauman, Deberg, Aye. Eberg, no. Bauman was I. Serta, Davis, Aye. Graf will vote I. Kittleson. Man, um, um, Meyer? No. Montemarro? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderwilly? Aye. Eleven ayes, three noes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, committee. Thank you. We've at least done this. We've gotten it down to two sites. Alderman Susha. Actually, I was going to amend that if it's not too late. Yeah. It is. It, it is. is too late? It is okay. too late. We voted. Okay. Thank you. But if, if she cares to, she can make a motion. Do you want to make a, another motion of some sort? 
Well, I can try. I just, I don't think it's right that we paid $35,000 to an expert to give us advice and eliminating the first site that he recommended. So I think that if we are going to leave more than one site on the table, that we cannot just throw away $35,000 and not take into consideration the uh, site on 23rd Street site. So I would make a motion that we also consider the 23rd Street site. And that way we're down to three sites and we remove two of them off the table. There's been a motion to include the 23rd Street site as one of the places to build the police station, one of the sites that the council will consider. Do we have a second on that motion? Second. We have a second. Any discussion on the motion? Let's take a roll call vote about including the 23rd Street site as a possible site in which, on which to build the police station. That would give us three recommendations to the council. Deberg? No. Eberg? Aye. Serta? No. Davis? No. Graf will vote aye. Kittleson? Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Sagali. No. Stefan. No. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. No. Vanderwilly. No. Bauman. No. Five to nine. Motion fails. We have two sites. Now it's up to the council which is us. <laughs> we'll get this written up and it'll be presented at the next council meeting. Um, yes, Alderman Graff. I believe we have to also eliminate, vote on eliminating the other two sites or was that included in the first motion? No, oh, no it wasn't? Okay, so we need a... Uh, um, Alderman Davis, was that included on your original motion to eliminate the other sites? I assume that, but apparently not. Okay. Alderman Danberg. Okay, Madam Chair, then I move mm -hmm. that all the remaining sites be re, uh, removed from competition so that we'll leave <coughs> Vandevart and the police state and uh, the, the site right now on uh, 9th and uh, Center. Second. Second. Any further discussion on that motion? Let's vote. Well, I, think we, I think we can signify by saying aye. All those in favor of removing all the other sites from consideration signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Alderman Danberg. Who, excuse me, no, who made the second on, on that motion? You're doing a wonderful job, Alderman Graff. Thanks. <clears throat> Agenda item number five. Submitting a petition from members of the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance consisting of 1,191 signatures from the citizens of Sheboygan requesting an advisory referendum regarding the 17 million to be used for paying the cost of acquiring land and constructing and equipping, equipping a new police facility. The 125 pages of signatures are available for viewing in the city clerk's office. I would entertain a motion to file because the council has already made an action on this. I move. Second. Any further discussion on this RO? All those in favor of filing signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Agenda item number six. A communication, let's take agenda item number six and seven together. They're both communications from Mary Zarafanetis. And, and I've called everybody on our agenda. Everybody has gotten a call from me, every single person. And Mary sign told me that she wouldn't be here. And she knows that we're simply probably going to file her communications. We've read them, we understand them, we thank her for communicating with us. I'd entertain a motion to file. Any further discussion? <laughs> okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carries. Agenda item number eight, a communication received by the mayor from Charlene Dickey regarding taxes in the city and concerns with the proposed costs of the police facility. I see Mrs. Dickey here. Do you, do you want to add anything? We've read your communication. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to file. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda item number nine. These are two communications that were received by the council and referred to Committee of the Whole in 2004. Some of the things have been acted on already, so I think these are simply housekeeping things, and I'll entertain a motion to file these two communications. So moved. Second. All those in favor, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Agenda item number 10, a communication from Gina Steinhardt regarding numerous issues about the site selection for the new police station and stating many discrepancies in the Zimmerman report. This is simply a bit of housekeeping also because that was the letter that we discussed in length at the last committee of the whole meeting and we filed the letter but now Sue has given us a document that we have to file. Do you all remember this big discussion? Well, of course you do. I'll entertain a motion to file. So moved. Is there a second? second? Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays? Thank you so much. Uh, agenda item number 11. A petition from residents near the area of the proposed North 23rd Street site for the new police station and other concerned citizens requesting ceasing consideration of the North 23rd Street and Superior Avenue site for the location of the proposed new police station. They are opposed to this site as it would be an interruption of residential life in the surrounding blocks, bringing an increase in traffic and noise. The possibility of adding traffic lights would devalue the neighborhood and curtail pedestrian activity. Um, I think we've taken care of that. Alderman Danker. Madam Chair, thank you. I'm seeing that the 23rd Street site has been taken care of now. I make a motion that we accept and file this communication. Okay. Makes perfectly good sense. Any further discussion? Your Honor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Wanted to uh, just clarify uh, perhaps what might be a misunderstanding. In the Sheboygan Press, I was quoted as saying that I had not heard from anybody that the 23rd location should not continue to be considered for a police station. The circumstances under which I was asked that question were a little peculiar because they were asked when the list was being shown to me and my understanding was, has anybody from this list called you? And as far as I knew, no one from that list had called me. But I think some people understood that no one in the entire community. Now, if I offended anyone, I apologize for that. I did get some calls, not a lot, but I got some calls from people within the community that said that they wanted the Vandivar location and that the 23rd location should not continue to be considered. If I offended anyone by not clarifying that, then I extend my apologies to each and every one of them, but that was the, the circumstances surrounding my comment that I made to the press, and I just wanted to make that uh, clear to the public, clear to the council, clear to the gallery. Thank you, Your Honor. Alderman Danberg. <clears throat> I understand where he's coming from because uh, the Sheboygan Press does make quite a few mistakes when they quote you and what you see in the print, so I'll have to kind of Back him up on this one. The press does make quite a few mistakes. <laughs> Move the question. <coughs> Did you want a picture? <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> okay, thank you. All those in favor? Of Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The motion passes. Communication number 12, the questions. 
And I think Alderman Graf and I are going to try to answer these questions. Good. <laughs> or what services sharing. could be shared at 23rd Street? That I don't think it's necessary even yeah. to do that. I think all we have to do is, is file this also. I think that would be a wonderful idea, Alderman Graf. And I would so move. Second. Any further discussion on move to file? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Thank you, Alderman Graf. Communication number 13. A communication from Roger and Candace Teach, 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 thank you, Teach, stating that they support Gina Steinhardt in her effort to clean up and improve their neighborhood and that her efforts are appreciated and should not go unnoticed. Are Roger or Candace here this evening? Do they want to add? We, we read your communication. We thank you for your communication. Seeing then I'll entertain a motion to file. Are you file. taking 14 and 15 with them? Yeah. Well, I think we'll see if any of the other people are here. Is Betty Davis here or Marsha Reese? Marsha Reese? Well, let's, let's see if we can take care of communication. I mean, agenda item number 13 and agenda item number 14. I'll entertain a motion to file. Second. All those in favor of filing those two communications. Who made the first? Who moved? Agenda nine, item number 13, agenda item number 14, the ones from the T. Koch family and the one from Betty Davis. Guys, I talked to them on the telephone, and we've read their communications. Yes, and Alderman Ben Akron, what would you like to add? I'd like to uh, not file 14 because I may speak on that a little later. Betty Davis is here? No, I would like to speak on it later when we come up in the Protection and Safety Committee meeting, part of it. Because there's something said in there that comes out with 14. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Agenda item number 13. Who made the motion? You did. No. <laughs> OK, I will make a motion to file 13. Okay. All those in favor of filing agenda item number 13, the communication from the Teacotch family. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We're holding number 14. Alderman Van Akron wants to address that later. Agenda item number 15, a communication from Marsha Reese, 1320 Maryland Avenue, and Stephanie Sorens, 1320 Maryland Avenue, stating they are sick and tired of being pushed aside and requesting that the mayor and council <coughs> listen to the neighborhood spokesperson, Gina Steinhardt, and solve the issues that they face. I assume we all have read their communication, so we know what's going on. Marsha, would you like to add something to your communication? Well, we do appreciate you putting the lights in the park. Um, we wish when you put the camera in the park, you'd actually have it fixed and it would be working. Uh, it's kind of a joke in the neighborhood that the older kids know that and they, they kind of dance and they uh, get a little out of control, some of the gangs there, because they just know it's not working. Um, we have issues with trucks constantly going down there. We had a rather good time last year. Uh, one day our street was two-way. The next way it was one way going west. The next day I went outside and they said, uh, I said, what are you doing? I said, we're making it one way going east today. So we never know which one way we're going to be. And on both sides of 14th Street, it says, no trucks. Well, the trucks are zooming by, and we have a stop sign on 13th and Maryland. They just kind of use it like a slowdown. They don't. They just go right through it. We have gone out as neighbors and you know, hailed the truck drivers and said, you can't come down here. It's a one way. They keep insisting that is they're getting their information from the dispatchers on where to go. That's the only route they're giving. But the route they're giving, it takes them five times to turn around to back their truck in. If they would go down Penn Avenue or Indiana Avenue, it would be logistically easier for them. A um, couple times we've, had, we've seen them slamming on the brakes. We've got about 30 kids in the neighborhood that the ball goes up, but the trucks, they just don't stop there and they keep coming down and it's posted and posted. And we have some of the worst alleys in Sheboygan. They're cracked, they're filthy. We have asked a couple times our neighbors to clean them up. Um, 
They haven't. We've gone to the city. city hasn't done We have one neighbor on 13th in New Jersey. Um, I think it's part of a movie. We see a suitcase out there once a week with clothes all over the place. Uh, their laundry, their garbage strewn out. Um, we know recycling is one day is paper, one day is plastic. If dogs in the neighborhood get the garbage ripped open, the garbage man will not clean it up, and some of the neighbors will not pick it up, so we have the stench there. And it's just like, we want to live there. I've been there in that neighborhood for 21 years. It's not, you know, the most plush of neighborhoods, but it's just like, yes, you're trying to help, but you're putting a band-aid on a gashing wound. We really enjoy the neighbors we are, but there's always a rotten apple in every bunch, and we're asking for your help. We appreciate all that you've done, but can, you know, we're a small part of Sheboygan, but you have to start somewhere. Can you start helping us? And you know, we can set an example. I mean, we have friends and family all over Sheboygan. And you know, we want to say, yes, the city was here for us. We don't want to say, yeah, we wrote letters, we did this and we did this, and you didn't do nothing. We take pride in our city. We take pride in our government, and we want to back you up, but we're asking you to back us up. We sent Gina Steinhardt as our spokesperson, and she's been shut down. When you shut her down, you're shutting us down. And that's not fair. We give you a chance, we vote you in, so please help us. We need to work each with each other. We thank you again for everything you've done for us, and we ask you, please, check us out. Come visit us, talk to us. You know, a lot of times about the park issue and everything else, you talk to people in Black River. We live right there. Come talk to us. Not once did anybody come in my neighborhood and talk about any of the problems. But you read in the paper, people from Black River, oh, save the park, do this, do that. Um, the neighborhood's not bad. Well, honey, come live there. We do live there, and we do love it, but there are problems. And before it gets out of control, we ask for your help. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. Thank you. Um, yes, Alderman Grau. Um, Marcia, your address is 1320 Maryland Avenue? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your support of Gina. That is very commendable for you to do that. But I don't have you on the agenda. But come to the podium, say a couple of words, but then we're going to continue. Because we, we heard about the... And your name and address, please. Your spelling of your last name. H-U-E-R-T-A. My address is 829 South 13th. And I'm at the very corner of 13th and Maryland. And I've, st I've stopped some of the truckers myself, and they have informed me that that is the route that they are getting by Rockline. And still, this month, we've been told by Rockline that it's not happening, and it's still happening this month. And we'd like that stop. Why can they continue to do it? If any one of us were still doing breaking the law, we would have been stopped by now, no matter what. How come they have not? Please help us stop the trucks coming our way. Or I have um, discussed it with Gina, and I would like to discuss it with the other homeowners that our foundations are cracking, and perhaps we should uh, discuss this with an attorney and see what uh, we can get done, if anything. Thank, Thank you. you for your comments. Thank you. Uh, Tom Holton, did you want to say something about the cameras? Uh, we somehow we'll have to find out if that's accurate that the cameras are on or off. Susan Hart, do you have some information about the camera? <clears throat> the, cam the camera is on. I think what was referenced to is when she says it's not working. We do not have video surveillance as far as a tape recorder recording it. So if a neighbor would call at 3 o'clock on Wednesday afternoon and say to the police, there's an issue going on in the park, the police could look, because it's in Captain Wallace's office, is my understanding, look at the screen and see what's going on and get someone right over there. If someone calls and says yesterday at 3 o'clock, there is no videotape that has recorded what happened yesterday at 3 o'clock. Okay. Thank you for that mm -hmm. information, Susan Hart. Uh, 
so when it comes to the trucks going down that street, they're disobeying the signs, it seems to me. That's all I want to say. The alley. Tom Holton, I was under the impression that the citizens on alleys care for the alleys, not the community, not the city of Sheboygan. Am I right or am I wrong? Well, we'll go in and maintain if it's a uh, concrete out, we'll go in there, we'll throw some asphalt, just do real minor patching. Otherwise, if you have to go and do a reconstruct, it's assessed back. But we were in the area out there. We did some patching. I, uh, we'll check that other alley. Okay. I thought they were addressed. Thank you, Tom Holton. I see Chief Kirk has, his, has something to tell us. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wish to add a little bit about the camera. Um, the mayor did request the camera to be placed in that park, and uh, certainly that's the, the reason the camera is there. Uh, Susan Hart is correct. Um, the, in fact, before I came up to this meeting, I was watching the park, and there were some people playing basketball in that park, and I made comment of it. And uh, basketball games are probably a regular occurrence there now, I understand. We do monitor that, that camera in that park. It is working. Yes, it is. Several of these issues that Gina has brought up uh, in this neighborhood has been brought or has brought up over the years. We've dealt with these issues now several years. I think we made some great progress there. I think we will continue. I would welcome Gina to still contact us and, and uh, speak of her concerns and we will deal with them as we have in the past. Um, as far as uh, the other issues, I, th I think there's a number of different issues in that entire neighborhood which I think we've addressed. We've tried to deal with uh, with different departments and I, I think we've come a long way. Is there some, some needed work? Sure. Uh, I just spoke with uh, Officer Winter and he brought up an idea as to what sort of barricades we could place up there so the semis uh, would not or could not make some of those turns. Uh, as far as the rock line, uh, uh, people, we I remember sitting in on meetings with Rockline. Uh, Sergeant Tarkowski dealt with Rockline on a number of occasions to get this information down and have the semi uh, operators uh, be knowledgeable of that information. So, where the, the problem is or the, where the weaknesses are occurring, uh, perhaps they need to be dealt with once again. So, I just wish to bring some of these points up. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this question was for Chief Kirk. A few years ago, maybe a year ago, because the one-way was mentioned, we made that into a one-way going east because of the Rockland employee parking lot there. And so they, uh, when they leave, they wouldn't go through the neighborhood. Is that working right now? I believe it is. It's, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Van Der Weel. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I've been down there two or three times with uh, Sergeant Tikowski and stuff looking at the area. We just, within the last month, I would say, signs have been put up from Illinois to uh, Jefferson that's no trucking. They used to go down the next street, bypass, and then come around the block and then go down the hill. We caught them that day when we were standing there doing the same thing. So then. Ryan was there, I was there, the fire department was there, we talked about it, and we decided to put every block, no, no trucking, and that seems to stop them some now. So I think we have improved a lot down there in, in the trucking. It has Because I have watched trucks different times come from the other way, and when they have left Mayline, they have gone out that way. They are supposed to not back up the street. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just wondering when the trucks are going down the one or the um, no truck road, road, should they not be ticketed by the police for breaking the law? Would not the next move now be to call the police when trucks are traveling down these no truck routes? Yes. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. You should be the chief. Chief, I have one question of you. Alderman Meyer said, if, we, if um, the residents see trucks proceeding on a street that says no trucks, should they call the police? Absolutely. Thank you. If I just... Yes, please do. I'm sorry, I missed a question. I was That's talking right. to somebody else. Um, yes, absolutely. I would, I would recommend that you would call, but get the added information that we need, such as a, a trucking firm license plate number, things of this nature, time, 
uh, such information that we can proceed with. Thank you, Chief. Sure. Madam Chair. Yes, Alderman Graff. I would move that the communication be accepted and placed on file. Do we have a second? Any further discussion on agenda item number 15? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Agenda item number 16. RO number 1680506 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Gina Steinhardt regarding continuing issues with the trucks driving to Rockline and not having the proper, proper signage recommends that the report of officer be placed on file. Discussion. This was the communication that was handled in public protection and safety. It was acted upon. It was handled. So we won't be handling the action. I don't know what we'll be handling. Let's see. Discussion was held regarding making Rockline a truck route from the 14th Street East to accommodate people at Mayline and Rockline and convert the street back to two-way traffic. It was stated that prior to any action, Alderman, Alderperson Susha wishes to talk to Mayline and Rockline. Alderperson Susha asked that the police continue to be contacted in regards to the truck issues. You're taking these all together or separately? Well, this one is about the trucks, and the other ones are building inspection. So I'm doing okay. the trucks. Okay. Alderman Serda. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just as a reminder, again, the reason why 16, 17, and 18 were brought to this committee is not so much, like you said, um, addressing the certain items. It was courtesy that wasn't given and extended to um, citizen um, Steinhardt. And that's why we've asked her to come here tonight to give her that opportunity to speak. And that's what, why this is here. Are you asking her to speak on this particular RC? I was assuming that you had that same impression. Ms. Steinhardt, would you like to address us about how you felt? Will this cover, this will cover the, the, the three um, agenda items because you're going to speak about how you felt about the agenda items at the time in which they were acted. I guess so. Okay, <laughs> all right, please proceed. Um, I have a couple other letters from other neighbors as well to submit. I realize submit that they're a little late. They're just basically saying the same thing that these neighbors have said that they don't want things to change, to go back to the way that it used to be. It is getting better. All we wanted was that Rockline be told to inform the dispatcher to let them know so they wouldn't keep coming down because as Marcia said, as Mary said, these truck drivers are still getting the directions. Even last Friday, even today, we've seen them. So, you know, there's still some kind of <coughs> miscommunication or something that, you know, is occurring either between Rockline or, I don't know, somewhere's in there that, you know, the trucks are still coming down our roads. And, you know, yes, we have called the police, and yes, the neighbors are coming out and trying to address the drivers and stuff. It's just that um, they can't. The, the driver that I spoke to and, that I, um, and the police officer that I spoke to the day when I called, they said, why don't, we, why don't you quit picking on the drivers and ask the city to fix the signage, is what the driver asked me. Because he's not from Sheboygan, he had no idea how to get down to Rockland any other way. And, you know, I'm like, you're right. How would you know if you went down to Indiana Avenue, there's no signs to tell him where the dock is, even though it's only a half a block from Indiana Avenue. There's just no signs. So, you know, I felt kind of bad for the driver, and so did the officer. And we both said, this driver shouldn't get a ticket. Rockline should for giving them the wrong directions. I don't know if they ever did. I don't know what the, the officer did. You know, I didn't follow up and find out any of that information. But as you can see, the neighbors are saying that they're still coming down the road. And I was just there to pass along the information that my neighbors have told me. That's why I brought the letters. And that's why, you know, these people are here. Some of my friends are here that, you know, and some other neighbors are here that, and my daughter's here, that they all are being affected by this. And, you know, we just wanted to tell you that, you know, it's really unsafe. And it's, you know, we just, we just don't want it to go backwards. 
and be opened up to truck drivers where actually it's, it's unsafe for these drivers to, to go the way they're going. So, you know, I just basically wanted to say, you know, I think it's getting better. It's much better than it used to be. It just, there's one little miscommunication or one little problem left to, to handle and then it'll be fine. You know. What Thank you, Ms. Steiner. What is that little problem? And that was like the truck issue. I don't know as far as the garbage issues and the um, repair issues, you know. We've gotten your communications. Those and, right. two, they're, they're still occurring. There's still, you know, lots of problems that way. And it gets worse every day. And, you know, I'm not saying nobody's doing their job or anything like that. I'm just saying if we eliminate, you know, if we try to handle and, and make these uh, landlords take responsibility for their properties, if, if one or two of them have to, the rest of the neighborhood will get the idea that they have to as well. Instead of in reverse is what's happening right now, is one or two think it's okay to dump their garbage everywhere, everybody's doing it. And they all get away with it, so they're thinking, this is great, we can throw it anywhere. And, and like Marcia said, we have to pick it up. You know, we have to deal with it all the time. And all we're asking is that, you know, we just um, get a little bit of help in that. That's pretty much, the whole issues, you know, we're just trying to clean up our neighborhood and make it a safer place and a cleaner place for our kids to be at, you know, and not be, um, you know, uh, a blight like you've put it in the past. And Mayor Prez even said in May that this is all going to be taken care of. I've got an um, article, Schweigen Press article, that this was all going to be taken care of. And I'm just hoping that it'll be, you know, wiped out more entirely instead of like one by one and you know it's it's just it's not it's not going as well as we had hoped I guess that's all. Thank you Ms. Steinhardt. Thank you. Alderman Sagali. Thank you Madam Chair. I guess the main thing about um, all of this is that what took place at the public protection and safety meeting and I would like to hear the tape that was um, I, I would like to hear I would like to have everyone and the council members hear what went on at that meeting that um, Gina was upset about, so I would like to have it played, please. We don't have a re we don't have a player. Otherwise, we certainly uh, might. Uh, we do. Oh, good, good. Let's play it. Thank you. Alderman Van Van Akron wants to say something. Alderman Van Akron, Alderman Van Akron, yes. Your Honor, these three items were brought in because of uh, what happened at the protection right. safety. Right, right, right. Uh, she was denied three times not to speak. Because she didn't raise her hand is what they're telling me. But yet she asked three times, can I speak? And she said, I will tell you when you can speak. And you will hear. So Let, you let's can, listen. You get your let's listen. Is that in front of the microphone, though? Well, He's going to bring it down. Uh, can we turn the microphone so it will pick it up? Do you have the tape? Roof that has fallen down, etc. 
and that the owners of the property were to take care of the problem in the spring of this year and nothing has been done. And item number two, RO number 229-0506 from Gina Steinhardt, regarding the ongoing issue with garbage being allowed to pile up in backyards on porches, stuck between garages in her neighborhood. Um, perhaps um, one of you two gentlemen, could you tell us a little bit about the missing windows and the roof problems that you saw upon your building inspection? I, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know. We don't have an address for that. Uh, Dean, have you been told on that? That was, that was uh, a, I just heard offhand, I'm thinking 13, 20, 21, maybe. Um, yes, I did find a broken window. Mm -hmm. um, if I remember right, it was on the west side of the house. Um, it also had a uh, garbage in the backyard, a uh, camper bowl in the backyard. We did get all that cleaned up. Uh, I, I have to admit, I, I didn't get back to see if the window was, was repaired or not. It, it was like a storm window in the house, and it was uh, it was fall, I believe, of the year of last year. Um, as far as I know, it, it is repaired now. Um, but I did work on getting the garbage out of the out of the yard, which I did, and then the uh, the Bolton camper. We finally just got removed this week <laughs> after really wiping down on the guy. We had uh, the spring of the year, it was too soft to get it out. He had an excuse for that. Uh, then through the summer, I, I got to admit, I, I didn't get back to it. Um, we did get back to it uh, just the past couple of weeks. And in fact, the day that he did move it, he wanted another week's extension. And, and we. We said, no, if you have it in there by this evening, you're going to receive a citation on it, and within a half an hour, it was gone. So, <laughs> and it has been cleaned up. Yes, the power of citation. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. What about um, the pile up in backyard porches? Uh, okay, that was, that was one particular uh, neighborhood that we did. Um, now, I, I, I have been trying to keep on it. I, in, I've only been the housing inspector for just a little over a year now. And in this particular neighborhood, I've, I've, I've got eight garbage pickups that we've done within that year. So I, it, it, it outweighs the rest of the city, even for, as far as this particular neighborhood. Um, one, one neighborhood, one neighbor in that neighborhood, uh, in fact, went across the street to even help. Uh, we did pick up washers, dryers, refrigerators out of the backyard. Um, I've been keeping an eye. In fact, uh, I've been at that particular residence uh, three times within the year. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm trying to keep up, trying to keep uh, a hold of it. And the owner receives the bill from the city every time that That's that correct, yeah. The owner, so the owner never responds to uh, to uh, letters that I send him about garbage. It just goes the whole week and then mm -hmm. And it might, and I, I have to admit, it might go another week before I do get a chance to get a garbage truck there, but, but we do get it picked up easily. Well, it's a big city to take care of, I'm sure it takes the time. Um, like, and like the, what I think is, uh, as far as building inspections, you know, we've gotten so many calls on that area, and one broken window does not constitute a nuisance. We have to deal with nuisance issues. A broken window is certainly it should be repaired, but um, we deal with loose backyards, uh, cars parked in backyards, garbage on porches, and everything like that. And we spend just an inordinate amount of time in that neighborhood, particularly because we get complaints in it. I've sent in there so many times. We don't. We haven't done seven or eight pickups in any neighborhood in the city. We have 200 miles of streets plus alleys to take care of. 15,000 dwelling units. There is no way that we should be spending that much time in that area. And, and we, we walked it today, a, a couple of other men and uh, police officers went with us. We walked that entire area together, and there was nothing other than um, we found a washer and dryer in the backyard. But within a day, things changed because that is a rental area. There are landlords and tenants moving in and out, and a lot of them are minorities and don't understand 
some of the uh, issues on picking up garbage. As a matter of fact, when Dean and I were there yesterday looking at this, um, they had a bunch of garbage piled in the alley, and we actually talked to the person. They didn't understand the English. We found, we found some of them did, and they moved it from the alley, but it's, it's still in the yard. But we'll, the part of that is, is it's a rental area, and we've been watching that, but there are a lot of other areas that are much worse than that, and, and I think we've been spending too much of our city resources on, on one area Maryland Avenue, 
large enough to handle tra traffic. <coughs> and then we also have a situation up there where we have two one-way streets going in opposite directions from each other on the major thoroughfare. If I recall that correctly, one to accommodate the children over at Sheridan School with the buses, and the other to make only follow traffic into the Rockland area. I would actually make a motion. <coughs> Your Honor, you see on that uh, speaking there that she has asked to speak three times. She didn't have raise her hand to what they're saying, but yet the chairman of that committee did not ever tell her to raise her hand. And also, the first time she wanted to speak, she was going to give her the address of the house they were looking for, which neither one of the two inspectors could find. The second time it was speaking, I, I don't remember what it was, if it was the boats and that in the backyard. Well, I went back there today, and I hate to tell you, the boat's back in the yard. And also, I went down the street where you went three times in front of that house. There's a bunch of garbage in front of that house today again. That's the fourth time. 
Now something has to be done. If you keep going there and going there and you keep doing it, we've got to hit them with it. We can't just keep saying, well, we're not going to go back. We don't have time. She was denied to speak three times at this meeting. I know that the chairman has a right to do that. But then don't tell me we got open government and the citizens got the right got back into the city hall, because I don't believe it. Thank you, Alderman Van Acken. Any further discussion on this? Alderman Graf. For the record, um, could I have your name? Glenn Fisher. I'm sorry? Glenn Fisher. And your address? 1014 Broadway. Thank you. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Um, since I was the chairperson of that committee, I just wanted to um, just share a little bit about what transpired there. I know that the tape was very uh, fuzzy and probably difficult for many to hear. Um, as far as the setup of the room, if you know where the third floor conference room was, the committee is set up um, uh, up at the front of the, up where the comfortable chairs are, up at the front of the room. And um, the rest of the building inspectors, the police uh, that attend, they all sit at the table um, with the committee. And um, along the sides of the room, you have the chairs where the public is uh, usually welcome to sit. And um, I received a complaint when I was on maternity leave. I received several complaints from older people and the general public who had been attending the public protection and safety meetings. They complained that Ms. Steinhardt was allowed to sit at the table as if she were a committee member. And I also received complaints that she was constantly interrupting and not raising her hand and contributing to every aspect that was on the agenda as if she was a committee member. So when she started interrupting the meeting, after her second interruption, um, I did make it clear. I said, excuse me, you do not have the floor. Shortly after that, she was told again, excuse me, you do not have the floor. When you look at Robert's Rules of Order, um, I took two quotes out of Robert's Rules. Uh, the first quote is, once a member has been recognized, he has been granted the floor, and another member may not interrupt him. And another section of Robert's Rules says that no other member may interrupt or call out remarks without being out of order. The presiding officer should remind such a member that the floor has been assigned and request that his remarks be held. Well, after somebody interrupts a meeting that I'm running five times, because there were five interruptions by Ms. Steinhardt, not always picked up on the tape, because the microphone was up by the committee up uh, near the front of the table, and she was sitting perhaps eight feet away in the side chairs over by the windows. Um, and of course, that was after Alderperson Radke had asked her at this particular meeting to move uh, to the side chairs. So after somebody interrupted the meeting five times, no, she was not granted the floor to speak. If you heard on the tape, um, after they were done talking about the trucks, Mr. Kuhnert rose his hand. He was called on. He asked a question about um, whether the street was graded properly. And um, is it my mistake for not telling her to raise her hand? After five times, I say, excuse me, you do not have the floor. I assume that she understood what she had to do. And if I made the mistake of not clearly stating, you must raise your hand rather than you don't have the floor, you know, then that's my fault. But you know, she comes to these meetings. She knows when it's appropriate to talk. I don't hear her shouting out um, inappropriate comments at inappropriate times. So um, those are some of the comments I wanted to make. In regards to the truck issue, um, I know that she also typed up a letter right after this meeting saying that I've never responded to any of her emails or messages and I've ignored her. And that's not true. And um, you can easily check her computer, my computer. I've written to her several times encouraging her. Every time a truck goes down her street that's not supposed to be there, she needs to call the police. And if she's the spokesperson for the community, I certainly hope she's funneling this information back to the people in the neighborhood because that would be the responsibility if she is their spokesperson because it's imperative. The Public Protection and Safety Committee cannot issue citations. You know, the building inspectors, they can't do it. It's only the police. They need to call the police every time a truck goes by, provide the correct information, the type of trucks, license plate, et cetera, and then the police will come and do the citation. I would encourage the citizens to stop flagging down trucks because I'm concerned that you might actually get hit by one of these trucks, and that would be the worst thing that could possibly happen. So after sending several emails back and forth, she did respond, as she did tonight, by saying that she still feels that it should be the businesses that receive the citation. Well, that's not how the law works. If I'm driving the truck and I'm going down the wrong way, I deserve the citation. You cannot give a citation to the person who may or may not have given me the directions on which way to go. So I, I want to make that real clear right now, that it needs to be reported to the police department. 
And one of the concerns that I have, and I expressed it again in, in the tape as you heard, is that when she sends out these emails, it's not just going to me and it's not just going to the police officers. It's going to public works, it's going to the building inspectors. There are usually 10 to 30 people on each email that goes out. And many of us do follow up. And what's happening with some of the businesses down there, I kept hearing, you know, Rockline, 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 and everything that was said here tonight. The majority of the trucks that are going down that street are going to Mayline. And what's happening is when I, the last time I spoke with Mayline and Rockline, they are getting extremely frustrated because I'm not the only person calling. There are other older people calling and following up on the same situations. Then you've got building inspection calling, you've got the police department, you've got public works. We're all calling these businesses when ultimately these businesses are not driving the trucks. Um, the last time I spoke to the operator at Mayline, I said, who gives your directions? And she said, I do. I said, how do you write the, route the trucks? She said, straight down Maryland. I said, that's not a truck route. And she said she wasn't aware, with it, and she, aware of that and she promised to stop routing trucks straight down Maryland. So I think that's going to solve the majority of the problems because if they're mainline trucks and the operator is giving the directions, she now knows she can't route them that way. And then we also spoke with some other people within that, that company. So I'm really concerned with the number of people that are being contacted on these emails. She has sent probably close to 100 emails, if not more, since the first of the year. If you send it to 10 different people at a minimal, that's 1,000 contacts within the city government that have been contacted about these issues. And when you have all these people trying to follow up on these issues, you're running into a great expense, um, not to mention a duplication of services. So what was provided to her at that meeting was um, we had uh, Ryan from Public Works put together a comprehensive list, a resource list. So when she has an issue with tall grass, she knows specifically who to call. When she's got a concern about garbage in the street, she knows who to call. And it's a resource that should help her funnel her concerns to the right people so we don't have a bunch of different people working on the same project independently. So I think in the end, um, everything is going to work more smoothly from here on out. And I certainly hope she's shared the resource list also with her neighbors so in case they do want to start calling, they know specifically where to go with what concern. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. I was part of that committee meeting that night. I thought the committee handled the complaints that she had very effectively. Everyone was definitely addressed. And I agree with your statement that we do know how Ms. Steinhardt feels about these things. We've heard about them many times. Thank you. Your Honor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm a little concerned <clears throat> about the, the term open government being thrown around. Um, so I wanted to make three points from what I gather from the tape. One is that there's a concern that there's a lot of garbage and it keeps repeating itself. Uh, I believe tonight we, we've talked about that. There's been a lot of progress done. Uh, keep in mind um, our city inspectors have the entire city to cover, not just one neighborhood. Uh, in my mind, they're understaffed and they're overworked and underpaid. And they have so much work to do. I, I, I applaud them for, for the amount of work they're able to cram in one day. Uh, I think they might be putting in the 13 hours a day that I'm putting in. The other issue uh, uh, deals with the trucks, continuously ignoring the no truck uh, allowed signs or whatever those signs are there. Uh, I think that issue has been cleared uh, tonight also. All the neighbors have to do is report it to the police. The police uh, should be in a position to issue citations. I agree with Alderman uh, Susha that citizens should not be running in front of trucks because then we're going to create another problem where there isn't one. Uh, the final point that I, uh, issue that I see extracted from, that I can extract from, from this tape tonight, is that it, being chair of a, of a committee is, is a very important role. A chair has to be able, and we must allow, a chair to maintain control. This is not the first time. I've been an alderman for four years, and I think some of the aldermen present here have been longer than me, and they recall times when people weren't allowed to talk, especially when people were interrupted. Uh, that never became an issue then. Uh, I, I, would, I would hope that citizens who are watching tonight are able to learn that if they would like to speak during any committee meetings, and in particular in city council meetings, that they need to be recognized first. I did talk to a police officer who was present during a meeting, and he assured me that Alderman Susha, as chair, had handled herself magnificently, had done a great job, and had maintained order. He also informed me that at the end, which we weren't able to listen to because the tape was picked up and taken away a little quicker, quickly, that uh, 
and Steinhardt left and slammed the door so hard that the glass almost broke. And I was told that if that glass had broken, she would have gotten a disorderly conduct a citation for that. So what I'm trying to say is that if, if we come in there with a mindset of being disruptive, we're not going to get anywhere. I think all of us, especially the citizens, need to come in and say, may I speak? There's nothing wrong with doing that. We need to maintain order. Robert rules of order is what we follow. The day we stop following that, there's going to be chaos, there's going to be no order, and we're not going to know where, which way to go. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Sazma, I think you have brought that list of information numbers along. Could you pass them out to the council so that everybody in council knows the information that was provided to Ms. Steinhardt? You want to call on Marge? Okay. Is there anything further that you would like to add, Mr. Sazma? No, that's just, um, that's just the same list I handed out at the public protection and safety meeting. It's like, it, uh, like Alderman Susha said, it's all the way from cutting grass to a rental park to annexations to traffic citations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the one thing that bothered me about what Alderman Shusha was saying is that I don't feel as all the people we have any right to tell our constituents who and who they cannot email. If she wants to email the whole city of Sheboygan with her problems, I think they as, as citizens and taxpayers, they have the right to do that. And we as aldermen really can't um, decide for them who and who they cannot email. Yeah, I, I agree. She can't, certainly she can't be prohibited from. But it would be a very effective suggestion to do it this way. I think this would be more effective. Thank you, Alderman Sagali. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I mean, Madam Chairman, <laughs> I heard the mayor talking here, and he said he never heard of one. I have heard of one. It used to be public, uh, set a law and license, it was JNL. Menard refused to let a person speak on an issue one night, one meeting. After that, a week later, that person from the mayor was told that she could speak and she had them speak at that forum. I don't have no forum on which she runs it, but when you tell people that they cannot speak and you tell them to go to a list like this that you're handing out, how many times have they called that list and said, call your alderman? I don't know. Plenty of I times don't know I've got calls from people saying, I call this one, I call that one, call your alderman. So where does it end up? By your alderman. I have no problem with anybody calling their alderman. I make the communication, she sends it to me, I bring it in, it goes to the clerk, she says where it goes, that's where it goes. She's on the document, she should be able to speak. I, I feel that this committee already in the beginning has told her that she's not going to speak. All the way through, I had the feeling that she was not going to be able to talk at this meeting. And that's the way I felt. Thank you, I'll get back. Oh, I'm sorry. And another thing, this one that we held, they say on there that they were never contacted by any other persons in that area for anything. You look on your papers, you got Explain yourself, Alderman Vacker, and what did you say? The one that you said, or that I held on here. The, oh, yes, yes, right. They say on there, if you listen to the tape, they say that they were never contacted by anybody. And he even asked Dean if he was ever contacted by anybody else, only Steiner. That is not true because you got a, on your papers today, you got where one has contacted them six months ago on the same window. So don't tell me that it isn't the whole area. That she's, she's speaking for the whole area because they made her a spokesperson. Now she's getting knocked down for that. I see she's doing a good job. I went through the day again, and I'm telling you, this boat that was supposed to be moved is back there. The one they went by three times, if you're going to forget it, it's going to be right back where we started a year and a half ago. This hasn't been going on for six, seven months. I don't know how many times Alderman uh, Shusha has been through the area. I have never found out. I have never seen it there. I'm there once a week going through that same area. Good for you. And it changes every day. I didn't mean it changes. So I feel if she's got a right to call me, 
If nobody else wants to listen to her, I will listen to her, and I'll keep reading all the communication she wants. Good for you. Good for you. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Madam Chair. I agree with the mayor that building inspection is understaffed, and they bring in revenue. So I've, I've always been in favor of having more building inspectors. I also agree with the mayor that we need to follow Robert's Rules of Orders, else there be chaos. But the average citizen doesn't always know Robert's Rules of Orders. So sometimes we have to teach them and help them and show them what we expect. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Vanderwell. Alderman Danberg. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. I sympathize a lot with Gina and the neighborhood there because I've been fighting a fight for 15 years and I've been fighting the guy that lives on 13th and uh, or on 13th and New Jersey. But since Matt and the inspection department got a little bit more teeth where they can issue citations, it's turning this guy around. But me and my wife, on Matt, on Dean, on Pat, constantly calling them. But they were, they were there, and now this guy is starting to turn around. And now that all this other stuff has been hashed out tonight and brought out into the public, <clears throat> everybody seems to be getting a bigger smile on their face. Everybody looks a lot happier than they were when they first come in here. So let's end the evening on a nice note and everybody be joyful. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Graf. Madam Chair, I would move to file 16, 17, and 18 along with 14. Do you have a second on that motion? Any discussion on the motion to file those communications? Alderman Susha? I was just wondering if building inspection had anything they wanted to add? Yes. They're going to give us some information of, of, of what the work that they do. And uh, this takes us to the, our, the end of the agenda, but not the end of our meeting, because we're going to listen to building inspection. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to respond to um, some of the concerns, or it was brought up, Ms. Steinhardt's inappropriate conduct. If you listen to the tape, her inappropriate conduct is when she asked, can I speak yet? Um, when she was told that she wasn't recognized by the chair, she cooperated. Um, and again, I would reiterate, like Alderman Vander Willey, that um, I hope we're not expecting that the citizens come here and be well versed in the Roberts Rules of Order. Um, if we just need to, as chairpersons, just do house rules before we begin, um, I think that would be helpful. Um, secondly, it has been said about Gina Steinhardt, she has been reminded that she could have cost the city thousands, if not tens of thousand dollars. But it was pointed out at a meeting that her neighborhood is not the only neighborhood like this in Sheboygan, and that there's many others that are worse. But it, I believe it was Alderman Van Akron who had said, but you know what, I bet you all of them wish they had a Gina Steinhardt in their neighborhood. Because it's because of her persistence in combination with building inspection that you've seen the results that you have there today. She has not forgotten of her neighborhood. And she will continue, I don't want to send a message to citizens that when you come back and you're persistent, that you're considered problemsome. Um, so I wanted to make that, and lastly, Given Gina's neighborhood, it is unique because I think we all agree, even building inspection too, I mean, it's tiresome because the week that they are not there or watching it, it's like the garbage comes back immediately. That's all I like to say. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would love to hear about building, building inspection's presentation, but I'm concerned that it's not on the agenda. I would ask Attorney McLean if, if we can still view this even though it's not on the agenda. It refers directly to what's going on this evening. I, I wasn't aware that it was directly okay. to what was okay. going on. Attorney McLean? But while we're waiting for Attorney McLean, Alderman Berg. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, just a thought, I think we've had a good discussion and um, clearly there's frustration on both sides of the table. Uh, I think that uh, for me, it would only be fair that we also offer to open the floor to Ms. Steinhardt if she has any comments at this uh, time. So I move to open the floor to Ms. Steinhardt uh, following Attorney McLean's interpretation. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I guess I would just say that, that you know I don't know what the uh, inspector is going to talk about either, but there certainly are uh, items on the agenda 
that you're still dealing with. I don't yes. think you've uh, filed them yet that, that address ongoing issues with garbage uh, and, and various uh, building inspection issues. So to the extent that, uh, you know, it's not uh, 45 minutes or two hours of uh, <laughs> propaganda about how great the building inspection department is, which is fine, but, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't see anything wrong with it, uh, and I think it's covered by the agenda. Thank you, Attorney McLean. To vote on opening the floor to Gina. Well, we can vote on opening the floor to Gina now, or we can see the um, the PowerPoint. Let's the motion before us is to open the floor. Oh, the Maybe motion before. is before us. To, do we have a second on that motion? Yes, you do. Any discussion on the motion to open the floor to Gina Steinhardt? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. I thought I would have done that before. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe pull it down a little bit further so we can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Um, I apologize if I did not understand the rules. I always understood in this room there was a certain, you know, I guess order that it had to be taken. And I did not, um, in the three years that I've come to meetings on the smaller committee levels, nobody's ever told me where to sit, where to do anything. And if I was on the agenda, I wasn't even asked to raise my hand or anything. I was just asked to speak. And I had no idea that I was breaking any rules. I'm, I'm very sorry if I was breaking any rules and if I have offended anybody by doing so, I thought it was more of a conversational thing. That's the way it was treated in the past years. And I was never given any idea that, you know, besides this particular meeting, that I was doing anything inappropriate. And I never meant to interrupt. Dean didn't know an address. I let him know what the address was. And um, he said nobody else had contacted him. And Betty had just called me right before the meeting and said that she contacted him three times and hadn't gotten a call back. And um, as far as why it got to committee, I don't know who gave it to committee and how things go like that. I really don't have any control over it. I emailed the people who asked me to email. Certain people like Dave Beeble, um, Sergeant Tarkowski, certain people had asked me to email them about the trucks, like Chief Kirk said, the date, the time, the kind of truck, all that kind of thing. So that's what I was doing. I was following up on exactly what people were asking me. Dave Beeble asked me to let him know which addresses were a problem. So did other alder people. So I just assumed that since Renee was our alder person, that she should be included. I didn't mean to, in, to email anybody that didn't want it. And if anybody doesn't want to receive an email from me, please send me an email and I'll take you off my list. I have no problem with that. And I apologize if I've bothered anyone. I don't know, I would like to understand, I guess, how I've cost the city money when apparently if, since you heard my neighbors and Don and everybody else that if there is a problem there, I'm not making it up. It's not, you know, just my issue. It's not, uh, you know, anything personal involved. I have nothing to do with it personally. I'm just passing on words from my neighbors and I don't know how I could have cost the city money by asking them to follow up on these things. And um, since I did not hear from Dean repeatedly, I did email Renee. Don has a copy of that email. Um, I got a ba an answer back from her on three different issues. Just call the police about the trucks issue. Never anything about Dean or what I should do or how I should handle it. So I just assumed that I was doing the right thing. Again, I'm sorry if I've done something wrong. And, you know, like um, um, Mr. Van Vanderbilt said that, or, or Ms. Susha said, uh, Ms. Serta said, it would have been helpful for me to know, have known what the directions were prior to the meeting, because I had no idea I wasn't supposed to be more conversational. And that's kind of why I have some letters from people that they couldn't come. Some people didn't even want to, you know, write letters or show up or anything because they were very upset about the way things were going and they didn't want to be involved because they were worried about the way I was being treated and they didn't want to get involved in that. So, you know, I don't want to make things worse. I wanted to make them better. My Thank whole, uh, the whole idea was to try to help the neighborhood, 
to help my area, to help the children, not to bother anybody. So if I did do that, instead of going you know, and telling somebody else that I bothered them, please email me or contact me yourself, and I won't do it anymore. Thank you very much, Gina. Thank you, Ms. Steinhardt. Chief Kerr. I just want to uh, just add a couple comments. Um, I think part of the problem is, is probably my philosophy on policing, and I tell citizens to call, call, call. Um, as far as Gina, I've asked Gina numerous times to contact me by email or if she's going to contact someone in my department to also copy me so I can double check to make sure that the matter's been addressed. So with that, um, even today, Mayor, as, as we drove around, we went uh, to look at Vanderbart. Um, you made a comment on a neighborhood that needs some attention. And there's a lot of neighborhoods that need attention. I wish to commend Gina on the attention that she's been asking for and for years we've been providing. I think uh, probably one of the best statements here tonight, I believe, it came from Silas in a sense that, I hope you said this, um, in a sense that I don't think we all know the Roberts Rules of Order. When citizens come, or uh, maybe an um, older person, Serta, has mentioned that perhaps it needs to be mentioned. Um, I think that's probably a good lesson we're learning here is that the citizens, when they come, um, need to be informed. Now, I was not there that night. However, I've been at others, and I did speak to several older persons about some of the lack of control that we were noticing. I give uh, Alderman uh, Susha credit for taking charge, yet at the same time, I think we have to remember that when we invite someone to come to a meeting that they're allowed to speak. So thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Matt Livingston, can you, are you getting prepared? I'm ready. Okay. Um, Marge Sagali, would you like to say one quick thing before Matt Livingston gives us some information? Chair, I think it's a very sad day in this council chambers when one of our citizens who has tried so hard to do so much for her neighborhood to stand up at that podium and have to apologize for trying to do a good job. Thank you. This is just a very sad day. Thank you, Alderman Sagali. Mr. Livingston. And Larry Hilbelink. Good evening. Thank you, Madam Chair and Council Members. Um, I know it's getting late, but I would ask that you indulge us just a few minutes in a PowerPoint presentation. Um, I'm sure we're all aware after tonight of the issues regarding Maryland Avenue, and I thought there was probably no better way to handle the situation than to take our, our digital camera and just go up and down the alleys, up and down the street, and just take a quick snapshot of this neighborhood compared to, at the end, a few other neighborhoods in the city. Um, Dean has been in this area since January 1st, tw 28 times to do inspections. I've been there myself 18 times over different issues. So it's not like we haven't been in this area. We have been really policing this. But as we heard before, there's 15,000 dwelling units in the city. So I think we, we truly have given this an inordinate amount of time if we see what we have to, to look at um, in this area. So what I would like to do is, uh, this was August 22nd that I looked at this area when I took these pictures. And like I said, you realize this is one snapshot in time. Uh, Alderman Van Akron is correct. The boat is back. Last week it wasn't there. Tomorrow that owner will get a $200 citation in the mail because he, dis because he did put that boat back. So we did give him adequate warning. We wrote him letters. He did move it, and now he defied that order. So he will get a citation tomorrow in the mail, just to clarify that that will be taking place. What I'd like to do is um, let Dean narrate what he's seen in, this, in these areas, and then I'd like to close if, if, if that's OK. And if you have any questions as you go along, just feel free to stop us and talk to us and ask questions because I think that's going to be the best, best way that you find building inspections perspective of what is happening in this neighborhood. So, Dean. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Dean Heslink. I'm the housing inspector for the city of Sheboygan. Um, as Larry has stated, this is August 22nd. And as Alderman Van Akron stated, he goes there once a week and it changes every week. <laughs> and I can attest to that. <laughs> it's uh, at any given time, I can, I can go into any one of these neighborhoods and uh, it can be totally different the day be as it was the day before. Uh, as you can see here, we do have snapshots from 
This is up and down Maryland Avenue and up and down New Jersey Avenue. We do have a camper in a, a motorhome in the back in the back alley here. This is in the back of uh, Maryland Avenue. Uh, we do have a we do have a abandoned car here on a, alongside the garage. A and this again was August 22nd. It uh, now if we go there if we go there tomorrow, the camper. I'm sure is going to be there, the, the motor home. <laughs> it, uh, I, I have to speak with this gentleman again. He did say something about having some kind of, uh, if he appealed this or something, that he could have that motor home there. I, I have to check in on that again. Um, I did speak with him last fall, and he did, he did say something about uh, having some type of appeal or something. I, I, being new to this job, I... I We'll definitely check into it, and if he does not have the right to have this thing there, I will get it out of there. Um, here again is is these are is the back of the homes right behind or right across the street from Gina's house. Uh, I think it was two weeks after I started this this job. Uh, I I went here and I picked up I think it was a stove, two refrigerators, and maybe a dryer out of the backyard. Now, since then, it has been it has been pretty good across the street. There is a little bit of garbage here and there, but but we do catch up on them. Uh, we do have a trailer here where somebody put some garbage in. Now, this has been sitting there for a couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to have to also get on this gentleman. He's on 14th Street. Um, this particular I can't exactly place this one. Oh, it is it is uh, across the street from Gina. This is. Uh, this is uh, on Maryland Avenue. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, here too. This is. Excuse me. I'm sure. What is wrong with this picture? I mean, it looks. Well, clean again, and to me. again, there this is. One is, there okay? is there is nothing wrong with this oh, picture. Okay. There, <laughs> I we were just going through Gina's neighborhood. Now, on, this was again. I got to remind you, it's August twenty second. Uh, we could have gone there August twenty seventh, and it could have been totally different. Uh, this particular is is next door to Gina. This is uh, uh, Kevin Nyheis owns this property. I am working on him on the roof. He uh, he he does have some shingles coming off of this particular property and and uh, it is a bad roof I have talked to Kevin about it he said he can't afford to put a roof on right now but uh, he says he he swears he does not have any leaks in the house and I me not being able to be invited into this place I cannot go in to inspect it so I I have to take his word for it but he did assure me that as soon as he could afford it he would be getting a roof on this on this residence uh, here another is another alley. This used to have a bunch of brush along the side of it. Um, it's cleared up. Uh, service garage has come and, and cleaned it all up. Uh, here again is, is the brush on the side. It, it used to be hanging over people. I, I had complaints of people brushing their cars on here, getting scrapes on the side of their cars. Uh, the, actually, the, the owner of this building did clean this up, if I remember right, right, Larry? Uh, here is the back alley, I believe. This is in the backyard of Gina's house. This particular slide here is is the uh, back alley of uh, Maryland Avenue on the south side. Uh, this residence is building a garage, or yeah, this this particular occupant. Um, the building materials there. If as long as he has a building permit, he de he is permitted to have these on his property. Uh, this is the dreaded boat and camper situation. <laughs> we uh, we did get it cleaned out. As you can see, it is parked up on the driveway, the camper. Um, as far as the boat, this was a picture of today, if I recall right. Uh, the boat is back. Uh, this particular landlord will have a citation in the mail tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to make a statement for 1312 Maryland. If I could. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I walked through today, and that picture was taken August 22nd. And today, at 1312 Maryland, there's just tons of garbage in front of it. So that 
just shows how fast things change there. Okay, it, it could be, I, I, I have to admit, I've been down this here alley here, which is on the south side of Maryland Avenue. I, I did not get a chance to get on the north side of Maryland Avenue today. Um, this, uh, as you can see, there was a smashed up uh, Firebird vehicle in the yard here on August 22nd. Uh, today, the vehicle is gone. I don't think they drove that one out of there. <laughs> um, here too, we got we do have a lot of people in the neighborhood that do, do keep their lawns up very nice. It uh, this happens to be along 14th Street. It appears the corner of New Jersey and um, this particular I can't exactly picture where this one is. That's the south side. Okay. Yeah, it's. And there we do have a, a trailer parked in the yard, um, and there we have some vehicles on the lawn. We can't, we can't, uh, we can't tolerate that. It has to have concrete underneath. Here is, ooh, I can't picture that one either. Okay. This is uh, South 13th Street. This is the corner of South 13th in Maryland. He does have garbage cans out in the front. Uh, it looks like he has some kind of cooker out there or something, maybe for fish. Now, if you look on the if you look on the south side of that porch, there is a commode sitting there, <laughs> and uh, it uh, it probably shouldn't be. It, some people use them for flower pots, and I can't do anything about that. Uh, here too, we got flower pots. We have uh, it looks like maybe a bicycle sitting along the. Now, if there's children's toys outside, if there's bicycles, if there's, uh, you know, things that can be outside, we do, we do uh, allow that. Here is the, the north side of Maryland Avenue in the back. Uh, it's actually the back side of New Jersey. Uh, this was the day that Larry and I were walking down there. This is a, a Hmong family, and we did communicate with them. We finally found one that could speak English, and... We told them it had to be removed, and now you can see the the items are removed. The backyard is clean, and this it was just word of mouth. We we happened to pick them up in the backyard and talk to them. Uh, now this particular place, uh, this was uh, August 22nd again. Uh, the backyard has quite a bit of stuff. I uh, about a week after that picture was taken, August 22nd, I came in the came in the back, we had a complaint, and the whole backyard was just full of garbage. And the gentleman was cleaning out his basement, and as soon as he came around, he said, are you from the city? And I said, yes, I am, sir. And he says, I'm going to clean it up. It's going to be clean by the end of the day. And today, this is the way it looks. It, it, <laughs> it just takes a little bit of prodding once in a while. Now, this gentleman was cleaning his basement. He was telling the truth, and he did, he did clean it up, and it does look nice. So I, we do have people that do that do conform to the, to the ordinances if, we, if they are asked. And now here we're getting into, uh, looks like a pickup truck in the backyard off the concrete boat. Looks like a boat. Uh, this has to be on concrete. Or we do have a zoning ordinance that says it has to be on concrete. So we will be getting that, uh, just like the camper in the boat on the, on the other on the other alley. Um, as you can see, we do have some stuff. Uh, we got a bicycle in the front yard here. We've got uh, a few plants. Uh, we do have outside fixtures on the front porch that, that can be outside. Uh, it looks maybe like it's kind of upset a little bit, but it, it is actually outside items. Uh, this is actually a really old home. This is, uh, I believe, if I remember right, it was from the 1800s. It, it really is actually a, a pretty nice looking home for the age. Um, Here is another, I believe this is off of South 14th. Um, it really is not a real terrible looking neighborhood We'd, on this particular day. We, we did. 
Here we have uh, Mr. Nyheis's roof, which I had explained about before. Uh, it is, there is gr moss growing on it. There is, uh, there, there are pieces that look like they are coming off the roof. Uh, now this is the house directly next door to Mr. Nyheis. And as you can see, we do have problems on that roof too. So we do, we do have to uh, get that addressed also. Here we have uh, the, the east side of South 13th Street along Maylines property. We did uh, the, the mayor and, uh, and building inspection has met with at least four or five people from the, from the Mayline company. We asked that they did address their, uh, their problems along South 13th Street and as you can see they have been working very diligently on it. The, the shrubbery has been taken down the brush. Uh, it is looking much better than what it did before. Um, they, they are working to clean this up. Now I do have a, I do have a complaint way on the, on Maryland Avenue, right alongside of Maryland Avenue and, and the corner of 13th. Uh, there is some grasses, long grass growing back there yet that I do have to uh, address. So I, we are, we are gonna be working with Mayline on that, but, but Mayline has been, has been cooperating ever since our meeting with, uh, with the mayor. So I, along with that, I wanna present. Would you like to ask a question? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, did Mayline fix that hole? No. <laughs> well, now that's, that's, that's a very dangerous, I mean, that's enough for an uh, adult to fall into. And it's right off that sidewalk and the kids could just fall right into it. That's, that's a very dangerous situation there. I, I, I guess I should readdress myself, Alderman Seagal. The last time I looked, it was not fixed. I, I, that was probably a month ago that I, that I actually walked the sidewalk and, and took a look. But, and I did, I did look for that particular one and, and it was not addressed yet. So I, I will definitely check on that. Uh, Right, we're gonna, I'm gonna let Matt take over. <laughs> um, Dean, that's gonna be a left click there. <laughs> um, I'm gonna address left. <laughs> I'm just gonna address this part of the, uh, the presentation on some of the things that we do um, that not only applies to this neighborhood but applies to citywide. Um, we do get inside some of the homes in tenantability situations and this is certainly one of them. Um, next picture, please. Um, this is a basement entirely packed wall to wall, floor to ceiling. Um, this is a backyard. This is also in this neighborhood. This is at uh, 1422 Illinois Avenue. Um, this one, I personally, in the past three years, have picked up four or five times. Um, when we get complaints on, on garbage, uh, typically this is what we end up seeing. Um, it, remarkably, situations like this, you would think there would be a prompter response you know, from citizens in that area. We don't normally patrol these areas, but when we do get a complaint, a garbage complaint, this is sometimes what we find. Now this owner here will get charged. There's a, uh, an extra fee for the refrigerator, any refrigerators, air conditioners, dehumidifiers. Those are, I believe, $100 a piece for a disposal and we do charge them for that. The cost of the pickup plus uh, 50%. Mr. Livingston, whereabouts in Sheboygan are these photos taken? Um, that one, the, la the previous photo was on uh, uh, North 11th Street. This one here, um, came in as a as just a minor complaint. Someone complained about garbage on South 7th Street, and this is what we found. Um, this was a homeowner doing uh, some remodeling project, and the neighborhood helped themselves to their dumpster. Um, this is uh, another example of uh, tenants had moved out, more tenants had moved in, 
and didn't appreciate the furnishings that the previous tenants left, so they placed them in the backyard. Um, this is on uh, 1330 New York Avenue. Um, and, and like I said, to put, it, put this in perspective, uh, typical garbage complaints, th this is what we're seeing in more and more frequency. And uh, just so everybody understands that previously the housing inspector was, uh, was supposed to do neighborhood surveys per the uh, Common Council. We were surveying this neighborhood because uh, someone felt it was in decline. So they would pick out three or four block areas, survey them, write up the houses in it for, you know, for painting and maintenance issues, garbage issues, vehicles, and that type of thing. For the past three years, our department has worked exclusively on complaints, exclusively on, on a complaint basis. This is South 10th Street. Um, this is another type of issue that we've had to deal with. Uh, th this isn't a structure, and that's why a lot of the things that we uh, take issue with cross a lot of lines. Now, is the building inspector supposed to look at this? Is the housing inspector supposed to look at this? Uh, zoning administrator? This, inside this thing, there's a, a, a large cabin cruiser, and the structure was built around it so they could work on it in the winter. The complaint came from the tarps blowing um, up onto the power lines. In fact, uh, he did take, uh, built part of the structure to move the the uh, utilities above his building. And that one has since been removed. Um, this was an apartment that we were called, called to by the fire department. Um, this again was a complaint from an adjacent business. This is on South 7th Street. Um, this is uh, Kentucky Avenue, 727 Kentucky Avenue. And take note of the date on the bottom of this photograph. Um, June 14th of this year. Um, this, the next date on this one, June 23rd. Now we're doing the garbage pickup, and uh, this, this place had a tremendous amount of debris, uh, tires, you name it, it was in the backyard of this property. We sent the owners, we got no response, we went ahead and, uh, and conducted an abatement. Note the bottom picture, the time on the picture, August 18th, this is the same property. So what happens is uh, most of the, the things, in, in, and you had touched on that before, and, you know, the committee members here, that a lot of these are evolving because uh, you can go there one day and the conditions are fine. You can go there two days later, two weeks later, or even six weeks later, and the conditions have changed dramatically. In this, in this case, they didn't change dramatically. They just went right back to the way it was. But we do need to hear... That's how we get our information on these properties like this is, is, is from the older persons, from the citizens. We get our information from the police, the fire, health department, and, and of course neighborhoods. And it's important that they do call us. That is important. That's how we find out about things like this. But again, as Larry had touched on, um, there is uh, 15,000 dwelling units in the city and uh, we've got one full-time housing inspector and one part-time housing inspector you know, to take care of all these complaints. Um, we do our best to get at it, but uh, as you can see, we have to prioritize our complaints. Um, this obviously would take precedence over a bag of garbage on the street um, or a, a couch on a curb on a cul-de-sac or something like that. We do have to prioritize. This, of course, is going to get a higher priority than some of the other complaints. Um, again, we do strictly by complaint basis, and that's why we have to follow through in this manner. Thank you, Mr. Livingston. Thank you. As you can Mr. see, Mr. Hilbeling. Oh, thank you. Um, as you can see by the last pictures that we showed on the screen, um, when we consider garbage in a neighborhood and a garbage complaint, that's what we usually expect to find. And sometimes, when we get complaints in the Maryland Avenue, we know what we're going to find because we've been there so many times, and we may not prioritize it as we should have, but because of our resources that we have we um, just go by what's the most important at the time. And we do always call back. I think uh, Ms. Steinhardt said that we that someone tried to contact our office. Uh, we do have answering machines when we're not in the office inspecting, and we always call back. Each one of us has an answering machine, and we go when we get back in the office in the afternoon, we always do call back. Um, and, but if the person is not home, we'll leave a message, or if they don't have an answering machine. So um, I think we done a job in, in the Maryland Avenue as good as we possibly can. And I, I would ask Gina to, to continue to call us if there is a, a problem. We will not 
uh, we will definitely look at it. We'll drive through the area, and if there's something, we'll write it up, just like we did with the boat today that came back again. But we will continue to do the rest of the city. So I'm open to any questions if you have any. Um, and we really thank you for your, your time tonight for listening to us and how we operate. Thank you, Mr. Hillbilly. Alderman Stephan, would you turn the lights up? Thanks. All right. Alderman Groff. I'll move to adjourn. Right. I think. We did. We did. We need to vote on filing these communications. Is there any further communication, any further conversation about these communications? Seeing none. All in favor of filing, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Now move to adjourn. I'll second it. Let's do that. Thank you. New territory for Sheboygan South, that's for sure. I'm playing a game here, and they'll they'll get the kickoff right away, Marty. Alex Beyer is the uh, kicker for Nina.